are creating the future in the conversations we are having today. Think about that one for a minute. We'll come back to it later on. <laughs> now, I'm sure your brains are all overflowing with the superb information that's been handed out over the last 48 hours at this, this conference by some fantastic speakers. So when I was thinking about what I was going to talk about today, I was a little bit torn. One part of me wanted to do like a 15-minute sprint through internet marketing and blast through as much as I could. The other part of me just wanted to share with you an idea. And I decided on sharing with you an idea. Now, this is an idea that hopefully will give some of you a different way of looking at some of the stuff you do every day, marketing. First, though, I need to clarify some stuff. So running Warrior Forum, the world's largest internet marketing forum, means that I have, or I see a lot of discussions on internet marketing. So this is kind of like some observations over the last 12 months. Now, when we're talking about internet marketing, though, there's a lot of confusion quite often. People will be talking about internet marketing in the conversation, and the two people have a different perception of what they're talking about. So let's clarify this to start off with. Internet marketing is basically the same thing as growth hacking. At the end of the day, they share the same goal. Both internet, and mar both internet marketing and growth hacking are all about the active maximization of a funnel. This can be short-term, this can be long-term. This can be a funnel for revenue growth, this can be a funnel for user growth. But they're interchangeable. So when I talk about internet marketing and growth hacking today, that's what I'm talking about. Now, I'm sure a bunch of you are also wondering why there's a pigeon on this screen, which we'll get to now. So I think when we think about marketing a lot of the time, we think about it like broadcasting a message. We think of it as a way to deliver a message, a little bit like putting a note on a carrier pigeon and sending it off, and that's it. We don't think about it too much after that. We pay for a, for a marketing campaign on, on Facebook, and we pay for impressions, we pay for people to see our message, right? And while this is definitely true, it is what we're paying for, I think when we view marketing and internet marketing as the delivery of a message, I think we miss the bigger picture. So I call this sort of broadcasting marketing, pigeon marketing. We're just throwing stuff out there, and, and that's it. At the end of the day, marketing is a conversation. It seems very, very simple, yet I think we often forget. More specifically, it's a conversation intended to elicit an action. That is, we want people to act based on our marketing. When you market to someone, you are trying to convince them to do something you want. However, for someone to act based on something you say, they need to trust you. And we build trust through conversation. When we're marketing, we are building trust with a customer to get them to do something that we want. Now, this applies to all kinds of marketing, from marketing yourself, going out in the bar, trying to get a date, all the way through to SEO. But let's explore this difference in pigeon marketing and conversation a little bit more. So imagine yourself in a bar. You see an attractive person on the other side, so you're walking up to them. Do you A, go, come on a date with me, I'm brilliant, or do you have a conversation with them? You see, this is what we're doing when we're marketing to people in broadcasting. We're just going up to them and yelling at them, right? In this context, it, context, it seems bizarre, right? Because we're familiar with this as a, as a conversational marketing, right? But it still, it is as bizarre when you actually think about what we're doing a lot of the time, when we're just broadcasting stuff. All of our marketing campaigns are part of one overarching conversation with a user. Sometimes this is a gain of physical conversation. For instance, if a customer comes to a website, an e-commerce store, for instance, and they're, they're looking around for a little bit, so we decide to pop a chat motor with them, and we have someone talk to them. They maybe have some worries that we discuss, right? We ease their worries, and then they make a purchase, right? We build trust with them through that conversation, and they end up purchasing something, right? That's a, it's a very explicit way of having a conversation through internet marketing, right? But we even have conversations with internet marketing and all kinds of marketing when there's no direct feedback. If you're, when you're conducting a conversation with someone like that, you're conducting a conversation with that little voice in their head. You're convincing that little voice in their head to say, yes, this is a good idea, I want to do this, or this is ROI positive, or I should click this button, right? So why think about it like this, though? When we start to think about internet marketing like this, I think it brings everything back home a little bit. You see, we're all familiar with conversations. We've all been doing them since we're very, very young. 
Internet marketing, not so much. Internet marketing for some people seems quite alien. I'm sure there's some people in this room that are very familiar with it. But for the most people, or for the most part, it's an alien concept to people. So when we start to talk about it as, as conversation, it suddenly seems a lot more familiar, I think, and more accessible. We stop thinking about people as impressions and sessions on a web page, and we start thinking about them as people. And this has some really, really interesting ramifications when we think about building campaigns. See, when we start to think about this as conversation, we start to build campaigns that are based around telling a story. Now, I'm sure there's a bunch of you in the audience that are got sort of going, oh, this is all very nice, it's a bit wishy-washy, right? Where's the, where's the cold, hard data behind it? So the fantastic thing is there is data behind this, right? This isn't just some nice sort of intellectual discussion, right? This is, this is serious increasing of performance. So two gentlemen, a couple of years back, Joshua Glenn and Rob Walker decided to test this. Can we add value to something by adding a narrative behind it? And what they did was very, very simple. They bought 100 items from a thrift store for about $125, one of which was this horse head. They then got 100 writers to write a narrative for each one of those items, and they used that as the item description on eBay. When they sold these items, that they bought for $125, they didn't, they didn't 10x their, their, their spend on it. They, they didn't double their spend. They went 64x, right? By adding a story to what they were selling, they were able to sell something for 64 times what they paid, right? Think about that for a second, guys. This is the power of really thinking about what marketing is, and looking for it through a human-centric view rather than as a collection of numbers. We spend our days drowning in data quite often. It's so easily accessible. There's data everywhere, right? And people can start to see, like, seem like ones and zeros, impressions and conversions. But when we step back and we really think about what we're doing, what we're doing when we're marketing, we can create truly great campaigns that vastly outperform if we ignore this. Now, you'll remember back in the beginning of my talk when I said, we will build the future in conversations we have today. And we've also just been talking about how conversations are marketing. So what I'm saying here is that when we're marketing, what we're doing is we're building the future. The marketing we're doing today affects the future of the company quite a lot. Whether it be from purely a financial point of view or whether it be from a perception of the company, right? And when we start to think about marketing, or we only think about marketing as broadcasting, as pigeon marketing, we, we miss this. Or we don't see the full picture. So we need to start thinking about this as a conversation. We've still got one more step to go, though. The first thing, or one of the first things I said, was that SEO is also a conversation. Now, this might seem quite abstract to, to a few people, so we'll see if we can clarify this. The traditional way of breaking down SEO is quite simple. There's on-page and there's off-page SEO, or on-site and off-site SEO. So we're going to look at on-site SEO first. On-site SEO is composed of two main things. You've got your site structure, if you will, or, or not the site structure, the page structure, the way you've marked up the data, and then you've got the content. So how do these fit into a conversation? Well, when you mark up a web page, right, what you're doing is you're clearly communicating to Google. You're speaking in their language. You're talking loudly to Google about what a page is. If you don't have the proper markup on your page, you're talking with a hand in front of your mouth. It's not very compelling, and it's not very convincing. Now, the content's also very important. We often hear people shouting, content is king, right, in the SEO world. And it's true. And when you think about it as a conversation, if you're talking about something and no one's interested in hearing what you're talking about, right, you're talking to a room full of empty people. You're not going to build traffic doing this. Then there's the off-page SEO, or off-site SEO, I should say. Now, this is about the authority of a site. So authority is built through conversation. It's built through a website talking to another website with authority. It's built through a website talking to a person with authority, right? If you've got a whole bunch of very authoritative people linking back to you, then it looks like you're also authoritative. Now, this makes sense when we think about it in conversation. Imagine if you were talking to someone about space, right? Maybe it's Buzz Aldrin, right? So you're talking to Buzz Aldrin about space, and he says something. You're probably going to believe it if it's about space, right? Makes sense. He probably knows what he's talking about. He's got authority behind him as opposed to someone else that you may, might have just randomly met off the street, right? You're probably going to take a little bit longer to be convinced by what they're saying. 
And this is the same thing in Google, right? This is the same thing in search engine optimization, is that when you're talking and having conversations with, with another page or another website of authority, then it gives you authority. Authority is transferred through that conversation. So when we start to think about SEO like this, I think, again, it's this abstract concept to a lot of people that suddenly comes back home. So to finish up, we're coming to the end of 2017, which means, sorry, 2016, which means we've got to start thinking about 2017. So we'll, where is internet marketing going to be in 2016? I think it's quite simple. Firstly, as always, there's going to be a bunch of people that don't change anything they do. There's a bunch of people that haven't changed anything they do since 2000, right, that's still doing it. It might not be working, but they're still doing it, right? What I think we'll see is the people that are really paying attention, I think the people that are really out there pushing the boundaries, will be starting to market far more like conversation. We've started to see a little bit this year, right? And I think those are the people that are going to really reap the rewards of starting to, starting to market like this a lot more. I think we're also going to see some changes in the SEO field. I think we're going to see SEOs, at the moment, it's an interesting in-between state where people are discussing it like, oh, very, very data-driven SEO tactics. When you actually look at it, though, the data they're talking about is years old, right? Or it's wrong. So I think what we're going to start to see is potentially a move away from that and a move towards a far more scientific approach to it, right? Perhaps a peer review with a much greater focus on timestamp to give you an indication or an idea of how important the timestamp is and the, the dating of information in SEO. I think it was a few years ago, 2013, 2014, Google announced it did 500 algorithm tweaks in one year, right? That's years ago now, probably up in the thousands. That means that probably when you go to lunch and come back from lunch, Google is a little bit different. Now, it might not affect you, but it might. This is why it's important to start treating this sort of stuff with a far greater importance on time. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a human face to our data. Thank you.